for the movement, the fundamental principles are something like an ethical compass. They help us all in difficult situations to navigate dilemmas. The fundamental principles are non-negotiable. But we see the boundaries being pushed every day. We see every day on the ground how warring parties disregard their legal obligations, how they misinterpret, deliberately or not, international humanitarian law, and distort, in particular, the spirit of the law, which is to protect civilians. Another dangerous precedent is being set by which destruction and impediments to humanitarian action are happening under the watch of the international community. And this gives it a sense of normalization and a sense of all of this being tolerated. What we are watching today is that humanity is being put on a scale. What we see is that some lives are not seem to be treated of, as of equal value as other lives. And this is very apparent when dehumanizing language is being used in political statements. And we hear these statements far too often today. This contributes to an environment that endangers affected people, but also our humanitarian personnel. And it also enables further potential violations of the law and basic humanitarian principles. Humanity is the overarching fundamental principle of the movement. It is also the core of international humanitarian law. Under the Geneva Conventions, even your enemy must be treated with humanity. A human life is a human life, no matter on which side of the line it is standing. Upholding international humanitarian law and preserving our common humanity is in the interest of all states, because tides can turn. And again, you can never know on which side of the line your people will be finding themselves. But more importantly, humanity and preserving humanity preserves a pathway back to peace and stability. There will always be wars, but we always have to be sure that we can end them and return to normalcy. Now let me come to neutrality, because neutrality is our license to operate in most difficult environments. As per our estimates, around 210 million people are living outside of government control. Also, the International Committee of the Red Cross is in almost daily contact with more than 270 armed groups around the globe, non-state armed groups. If we were asked to take sides, if we were asked to change or reinterpret the principle of neutrality, our work would become impossible. There are too many places where neutral humanitarian action is under great brave threats nevertheless. And this is the case where neutral humanitarian actors are targeted and attacked, including subject to online hate campaigns. And our principles come under threat, and especially our principle of neutrality, where restrictions from sanctions and counterterrorism measures impede our capacity to deliver vital humanitarian assistance and protection. And this is why more than ever, the world needs principled humanitarian action. I thank you and pass the floor to my colleague, Kate Forbes.
Excellencies, distinguished delegates, today, Mariana and I stand before you to reaffirm the fundamental principles of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement. We respectfully appeal to you, states, parties to the Geneva Conventions, and the members of the International Conference to protect and uphold the movement's principled humanitarian action. Born out of the ashes of conflict and a profound response to human suffering, these principles were established to ensure humanitarian efforts could be conducted without discrimination, political bias, or obstruction. Today, they remain the cornerstone of our ability to operate across borders, cultures, and in the context of conflicts, disasters, and other emergencies. In a world increasingly impacted by crisis, our fundamental principles are not mere relics of the past, they are living commitments that must be honored, especially now, as the temptation to politicize humanitarian aid has never been stronger. When disaster strikes, whether earthquake, flood, drought, or pandemic, our principles allow us to act freely, swiftly, and equitably, unhindered by bureaucratic challenges or political agendas. In the race to save lives, every second counts. In the context of migration, the principle of humanity is our most urgent call to action. Migration is often reduced to statistics, yet each migrant and displaced person is a human being with rights, aspirations, and vulnerabilities. Our principles compel us to respond with compassion and without discrimination, whether individuals are fleeing conflict, violence, poverty, or a climate disaster. However, principles are not enough. Living by them requires humility and resolve. Acknowledging our shared responsibility to people in vulnerable situations and remaining steadfast in our commitments regardless of the challenges. Marianne? The movement as a whole, through the Council of Delegates resolution adopted last week, has re recommitted to the fundamental principles. Today, as the Red Cross Red Crescent movement, we call on states to act upon their legal and moral responsibility to respect principled humanitarian action and humanitarian personnel. Concretely, this is what you can do. Take all appropriate measures to prevent, stop, and remedy any abuse, pressure, misinformation, disinformation, and dehumanizing rhetoric through social media or otherwise that harms the physical, psychological, or reputational well-being of people in vulnerable situations and the staff of volunteers of the movement components serving them. Ensure that sanctions and counter-terrorism measures do not impede the ability of impartial and neutral humanitarian organizations, such as the movement components, to have access to people in need and deliver humanitarian assistance and protection activities. You can swiftly and faithfully implement the humanitarian exemptions required by the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2664 of December 2022 and include similar humanitarian exemptions in autonomous sanctions and counter-terrorism criminal laws. Today, we ask you to commit 
fully to your obligations to respect and support all movement components in their adherence to the fundamental principles as enshrined in the statutes of the movement. In particular, we appeal to you to collaborate with national societies supported by the International Committee of the Red Cross and the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies to ensure that all levels of government and public authorities understand, respect, and facilitate the mission, mandate, and principled humanitarian work of national societies, especially in their auxiliary role to public authorities and the humanitarian field. We urge each state to renew its commitment to respect the ability of the ICRC, the IFRC, and national societies to operate in alignment with the fundamental principles, particularly impartiality, neutrality, and independence, as essential to ensuring safe and unrestricted access to those in need. This includes strengthening the legal standing of national societies and domestic law, and refraining from requesting actions that are in conflict with our fundamental principles. We call upon each of you as representatives of states, partners in our shared commitment to humanity, and members of communities to honor and uphold these principles. Humanity must guide every decision we make. Impartiality and neutrality must be the shield that protects our volunteers and the staff and the people we serve. This spirit of voluntary service must continue to reinforce trust. Unity must allow us to act as one powerful force for good. Independence must safeguard the ability of all the components of the movement to act free from political pressure. And universality must continue to underline our solidarity and mutual support. Thank you.